Firstly, let's look at the polymerization of ethene to make polythene. I've got here my little model of ethene, C2H4. You can see the double bond in the middle there between the two carbon atoms and four hydrogens around the outside. Representing that as a chemical formula would be C2H4 and as a structural formula it would look like this. C, double bond, C, H, 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 H. When polymerization takes place, many monomers join together to form a polymer. So I need some more. So there's a second ethene, and here's a third ethene. So I'm going to write the formulas of those underneath. Now, in order for the monomers to join together, the double bonds in ethene have to open out. So I'm opening up the double bonds. And that allows the monomer to bond to the next ethene. So I now put them together. I should end up with a long chain of atoms. In other words, a polymer. Okay, so I've got a long chain of atoms there. I'm going to draw what that looks like when it's not all filled up. We've got carbon, carbon, four hydrogens, four hydrogens, then that is joined to the next monomer. So I've now got a chain six long. Um, and if you have a look at the end, there's a bond on the end which could join to the next. Now, we've got to remember that actually when polymerization happens, it's not just three monomers joining to make a polymer, it's millions and millions and millions. So we need a way of representing the fact that a million monomers could join together to make a polymer. So I'll show you how to do that next. I need to start turning this into a chemical equation. So I'm going to show my monomer as a reactant on the left hand side and then I'm going to use an arrow to show that that's going to turn into the polymer which is a product. Now in my reaction that I modelled up here I actually had three lots of the monomer so I'm going to put a large three in front of that to show three lots of the monomer. Now showing the polymer is a bit harder so what I've done up here is I've divided the polymer into sections to show how it came from the monomer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write one of those sections down. Now, if you look carefully, I've got brackets around it, and I've got bonds which start inside the bracket and move outside. That is to represent the fact that that will be joined to the next part of the chain. In my polymer here, I've got three units in the chain. So I'm going to use a small three on the right hand side to represent that. Now we need to remember in a real life polymerization joining together to make chains and which is millions, millions of monomers units long. I need to try and show that somehow. But it's quite hard to do because it's going to be a very large number of monomers and I'm not going to know exactly what it is. So we use the letter N to represent that. So I'm going to write this out again. I've got my monomer as the reactant on the left hand side but I'm going to show that there are millions and millions of them and I don't know quite exactly how many they're going to be by using the letter N. So I've got N lots of that monomer. My arrow means it's going to turn into a product 
and I'm going to write out the section of my polymer chain again. And again, I'm going to have brackets and bonds going from inside to outside the brackets to show it's connected to the next part of the chain. I'm going to write a small n on the bottom right, the right hand side. So this equation now says that millions and millions of monomers would join together to make a polymer chain which is millions and millions of units long.